Well, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you all had a good Thanksgiving weekend. It is November 28th. I'm Gunnar. I'm Dine. Call me Dine. Welcome to Let's Play Super Metroid Justin Bailey version. Super Metroid itself came out in 1994, and someone released this graphics hack back in 2002, but I only found it a couple months ago. And since I figured this is a good time to just go ahead and replay the game, this is my next project. So, might as well just get right into it. I don't, uh, it's the most popular Metroid game. People say it's still the best. It really needs no introduction. So, let's jump right into it. Nintendo. Nineteen ninety four. Eighteen years ago. Holy cow, I feel old. We just already know it's from Nintendo. Who are you? Cy Roth? Nintendo presents the title that no one ever refers it by. Metroid three. Probably a good thing too, because the Prime series took everything out of whack. You might have noticed the Metroid logo was yellow for a second and swatched over to the blue. Now, this is all there is for the intro. You have the little baby Metroid from the end of Metroid 2 there. Dead scientists around it. Very ominous, very eerie. Flow tune music. And this is just a demo. I'm going to skip that. <laughs> we'll see it in a, in a moment. So the Justin Bailey hack is exactly what it does in the, in the original NES Metroid. Samus is completely suitless. So we'll see a few changes on, on her. Really nothing else. I'm going to... Change the controls here. Do what I'm do what I'm mostly used to, and get right into it. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. Thank you, Hal Nine Thousand. I first battled the Metroids on Planet Zebus. It was there that I foiled the plans of the Space Pirates leader, Mother Brain to use the creatures to attack galactic civilizations. This is, the, this is the first change. You see her face rather than her helmet. What, what I was really hoping for is just to find a voice clip of this. Well, if you, if you look at some deleted, deleted usage of the introduction from Metroid Prime, you have Samus' voice actor from that doing an opening narration while she Oh, she flies up to the space pirate frigate. It'd be awesome if she was able to do this, too. I next fought the Metroids on their homeworld, SR-388. I completely eradicated them except for a larva, which after hatching followed me like a confused child. I also forgot I have to push the button to advance it. <laughs> well, I was already using the hacked graphics in these flashbacks here. Not holding onto her... Well, not wearing her suit, just holding onto her gun. I personally delivered to the Galactic Research Station at Ceres so scientists could study its energy-producing qualities. Oh, even this little shot, even though her face looks weird and her butt is huge. <laughs> oh well. This, this is 16-bit graphics, it's not going to be perfect. The scientists' findings were astounding. They discovered that the powers of the Metroid might be harnessed for the good of civilization. I get awkward pauses in here because we have to wait for the text to advance. <laughs> That guy on the bottom left looks like a monkey. I, ne I never would have noticed that had I not watched NCS Race Bear of Love <laughs> on this game. This will not be 100% run, by the way. Satisfied that all was well, I left the station to seek a new bounty to hunt. But I had hardly gone beyond the asteroid belt when I picked up a distress signal. Said his station was under attack. Yeah, this is the most impressive cutscene we could get in the game for these graphics. You just gave us the name. It's called Ceres Station. Why are you labeling a space colony game? <laughs> so here we see Samus in all her glory and color and suitless. And it's even it's even the non ambidextrous surprise. She will always hold her gun with her right hand. Or has her back turned to you when facing right. And, of course, she'll do the normal flip when you jump. And let me, let me, let me double check the wall. I, I think it's Sprite Ambidextrous doing the wall jump. Yeah, she was holding it in her left hand for that, so... Not, not, not perfect. And Varus is immediately in the chat already faffing to suit with Samus. Can't really blame you, Samus always was beautiful. 
And for those with a leotard fetish, this is perfect. <laughs> Guilty as charged! Uh, wait a second, we just saw this in the title screen. Something's definitely wrong. Uh, one thing that a lot of people who've never played this game before don't know is if you hold hold the dash button, you will run faster. It's the baby! No, I, I'm not going to go there. I thought Other M wasn't that bad. I love the gameplay in it. But, fortunately, this is not Other M in the sense that Samus is not panicking at Ridley's appearance. Now, there is a little special extra cutscene you get in here if you beat him without taking any damage. I have never done that. Not even going to try now. <laughs> Already failed. But if you hit him enough or he hits you enough, then the game will progress. As for how long I'm going to go per session, I really don't know. I've only, only been going for about three minutes so far. But definitely no more than two hours, since that's usually the cutoff between Twitch and YouTube. And uh, almost out of energy, it doesn't matter, he's running away, he's going to let me live. Emergency. Self-destruct sequence activated. Evacuate colony immediately. No shit, <laughs> Sherlock. Only a minute. Well, everyone else is dead, so I don't have to worry about getting them out. And this is also the iconic Ridley theme. Oh no, the camera's tilting! I really don't know why they did that. The artificial gravity doesn't screw up or anything. And the, the steam does not hurt you, thankfully enough. Simply because you're already at low health. Uh, just jump straight up, you'll usually get through, even if you... Even if you take a hit. And this is definitely the hardest room to get out of, because of the steam and the jumps. Uh, once, you're on, once you're on the elevator, you're home free. No matter how much time you have left, you'll always make it out at this exact moment. We're going to escape at ludicrous speed! Ludicrous speed? Sir, we've never gone that fast before. I don't know if this ship can take it. What's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken! Prepare ship! <laughs> Randomly quote Spaceballs. Gotta love it. Well, I'm at a ludicrous speed now anyway, I can't, I can't finish the scene. And here we are, back at Planet Zebes, or Zebes, or Zebs, or however the hell you want to say it. I've never, never found out the official pronunciation. But I love, I love this first area, though, because you get to go through some of the areas you were in the first game. So it's a very nice, nostalgic situation. Seems oddly empty right now. Where are all the creatures and the flying critters and the zoomers and the screes and all those guys? Well, I think some of them were only in prime. I'm going to take some time to look around. Can't get in here. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this is not going to be a speed run attempt. This is not going to be 100% run attempt. <laughs> this is just a casual play through the game. I'll finish it when I finish it with however much I get. But this looks familiar. And thankfully it's not tilted either. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever saw the ending to the original Metroid, a friend of my brother's was playing it, and he kept missing the jumps and falling back to the beginning. He's the only guy I've ever seen who nearly ran out of time. And of course we were panicking, because we didn't want him to get blown up. We'd, we'd been trying to beat that game for a long time. <laughs> I tell you, Metroids are still the scariest video game enemies I've ever seen. Just just how aggressive they are in the original, and how quickly they kill you. Scarred me for life. And Nintendo claims to be family friendly. <laughs> huh? This, this looks even more familiar. So instead of the round ball, they call it the morphing ball in this one. I remember in the my brothers and I would always argue whether it was called the Maru Mari or the Round Ball based on the based on the original Metroid instruction booklet because they did list it as the Maru Mari or Maru Mari, which is how, oh of course you would say it in Japan. I can't get through that missile door. Oh. For a second there, I thought I glitched the game. Couldn't open the door. Now, as nice as the item get fanfare is in this, it does get a little annoying with how many missile pickups you have. Not too much of a problem. Uh, 
But I can definitely see why people still claim this is the best Metroid ser Metroid game in the series. It perfected the formula of the Metroidvania genre. And I think I like Zero Mission a little bit more than this one. Mainly because it, it refined those refined it a little bit more. And Zero Mission has a few tweaks in it that just make it more easy to control and handle. I think, I think they just simplified a few things that were unnecessarily tricky in this. They made the wall jump a heck of a lot easier, that's for sure. And in, in Zero Mission, Zero Mission isn't as linear as Fusion is. You can sequence break in that one quite nicely. In fact, you're encouraged to. On this one, it's not as linear as Fusion, but it's fairly, it is fairly straightforward. I, th I think the later games just fixed the little, little, the little things that bothered me on this one. And these space pirates are using the ones on Prime at the beginning. <laughs> Go down in one shot. But the music's active now, so we definitely know something's going on. And this is the first room where we get to use our diagonal shots effectively. No Ridley to just absorb them. Oops. I still think my Z key may be <laughs> wearing out. Gave me enough trouble on Mega Man 3 as it was. But there's no reason you should die between the beginning of the game and up up until you get into Brinstar. I think for this part of the video, I'll at least go up to the Spore Spawn. My, my least favorite boss in the game, but it's nice to get him out of the way first. And up we go, through the loading tubes. Another missile door. And if I can jump for for me, we'll get in there. <laughs> Some simple enemies, usually for item drops. Just make our way through here. There should be another missile pickup on this other side, if I remember correctly. No, it's the map station. Never mind. So it's definitely nice to have a map. Yeah, the, the biggest nitpicky thing I have about this one is it shows the items on the map, but it doesn't show if you got them already or not. <laughs> That's definitely the best thing they did in Fusion and <laughs> Zero Mission. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to get those items when you find them on the map. I, remember, I think those swooping at the large ones are called Rios, if I remember correctly. I have to look up the original manual again. <laughs> They're all in there. Enemies in the first half of the game are recycled. <laughs> well, not entirely. Just in, just in Brinstar and Norfair. And here's our first save point. Which unfortunately does not also recharge your energy as it does in the Prime games. I don't think they, I don't think they do in Zero Mission or Fusion either. But in the Prime games, it makes a lot more sense. On this, combat is a lot more frequent, so it's not hard to restock. Just dashed by these guys. Ah, oh, the debris got me, though. And again, playing on a keyboard still. So, so if I have some weird movements or such, it's because I'm pushing the wrong button. And here we are, coming up to our first boss. Not a spoiler at this point. Who hasn't played the game at this point? <laughs> Let me get our bombs. Even, even the little suit graphic has changed. She's the Ronald McDonald! Oh no, she's the Ronald McDonald Samus! No! <laughs> what did you do, hacker? <laughs> you couldn't change that color? But the Chozo statue isn't happy we stole his little object. He was having fun holding onto it. He's not hard, though. So I'll just use your missiles and take him out with a few more shots. He can run back and forth. You sh he shouldn't kill you. 
That was about 20 shots. And he's toast. So that thing was used more as more as of a generic boss theme rather than just Ridley theme on this version. Run by all these guys. We're stocked up. And get back out of here. Now this room has a significant and feature later on in the game too, at the very end. It actually affects the ending by a minuscule amount. <laughs> But it's actually canon, so I'll go for it at the end. Okay. The left is the way to go, but we can come back down here to this room we couldn't get into earlier. No, we could get into it, just not very far into it. So I'll just go into Morph Ball, lay some bombs, and there you go. So, get another missile pickup. Now some of the best hidden secrets in this game, or in any Metroid game in general, is you can always find, sometimes find a power-up right next to another one. So if you come into a, if you come into a room, always search for hidden passages. There might be another power-up in there. That's usually the case with missiles. You'll find often find two in a room instead of one. So we are effectively into the game at this point. Time to head to the first area. I, c I consider Criteria the intro area, even even though you get that in the in the Saturn station, but it's not long enough to really count as much. So lay your bombs. This is the way to go. You just dash through here. These enemies aren't too much of a problem. But what you want is right on your way. Just pick up that energy tank. Yeah, let's see if these guys hit me. Yep. <laughs> More space pirates. Yeah, these guys actually know how to block, so I just hit them with a bomb. Or hit them... Or maybe hit them from behind. There we go. But they do, they do a lot of damage, too. Come on over here. These guys are actually smart. Oh, we'll just plow through them. It's a lot of damage, unfortunately. Or, if I'm smart, I remember... Oh, I have missiles! Hello, it's fly! <laughs> I was thinking I need to use the charge beam against them, but I don't have that yet. Okay, if you come in here, there's actually no reason to come in here until much later, but it showcases just how, oh, how big your mission is. So we got these four statues here, representing the four major bosses of the game, and we can only proceed once all four of them are beaten. Just like getting the original Torin in the first game. You have double the bosses. Two of them are rehashes. That's okay, they're they're great fights. So it's not not as easy to charge through here. Those those uh, zemers are made of metal. I think you can only kill them with missiles. And you have these little guys here, which are great for restocking your supplies. There are two of them. Just can't charge right through them, unfortunately. Uh, that's okay. Now get into the elevator here, we get enter the first area. First area, second area. I'm, I'm just going to say first for the sake of staying consistent. The jungle region of Brinstar, where Samus trained when she was being raised by the Chozo. Now say what you will about oh, really Samus' backstory or anything, anything that's in Other M. Read the original manga. It is canon, and it is very, very good. Shows just how hardened Samus is while still re while still retaining her elements of humanity. There's no such thing as a dead end in this game. It's usually just a blocked passage to the next area. <laughs> yeah, 
and here's the map region. Map room, not region. So, well, Brinstar is definitely about three times as big as Criteria was. And if you look in the bottom right corner, there's some kind of weird icon. That's that's the big boss of the area. Uh, in the chat, have to ask, for someone who hasn't beaten any Metroid game but played almost all of them, do I need to play them in order story-wise, chrono, whatever? Nah. There's, there's really nothing in each game that it's needed to understand what's going on. E each game is very well standalone. The, perhaps the only exception is the Prime Trilogy. All three games are great on their own, but as a whole, they're made even better. If, once you understand what's fully going on. As for all the others, you don't have to worry about it so much. Especially since the intros of this infusion pretty much give a story so far in their introductions. And e even Other M does it. Other M is the direct sequel to this one, and then and then Fusion. But you don't need to you don't need to, don't need to play this first to fully understand it or enjoy it. And I won't be using save states on this LP, so I'm going to be saving as often as I can. There are a few tough scrapes in the game where I may die once or twice. That's another thing I need to do is if I if I get into this if I get into the situation to show off the crystal flash, I'll have to do that. Let's see if I can't come this way first. Okay, you don't want to shoot these guys. Otherwise your light source will deplenish you'll be wandering around in the dark. And I think they die even if you hit them. So at this point in the game when you don't have a whole lot of energy to spare... Oh. All that for a missile recharge. <laughs> so no need to come back here. And I figured I had good timing in starting this, even even though it, I was hesitant to start it, just afraid of not having much to say, or or just just with what happened with my last video, Twitch kind of cut it off after a half hour, so the second half is all disjointed on YouTube, even though it only does that usually after two hours of playing. Actually, there's one thing I want to check, but it's good it's good timing to start this today. Of course, Nintendo Capri Sun is doing his LP of, of Prime 2, which I want to replay. It's the only one I haven't played more than once. Well, I, w I went th halfway through Prime 3 and then started over when I stopped playing it for a couple years. Went through Prime 1 two or three times. But, I'm also, I'm also very happy to say I finally got a new job. I, I was given the offer last Tuesday. And I start, I start on Monday, which is one reason why I'm hoping to stream through this whole game this week. But I got, I got a, I got a little impulsive, but after, our, after I got the offer and, and bought, and bought a few things, including some new figures. I actually bought a Wii U and a Vita to open on Christmas, but I also bought some figures, and one of them is Samus in her Zero suit, and that's going to arrive in the mail today. <laughs> So, very appropriate that I'm play playing through this. And the, the figure itself is based on her other M design, so she's in her zero suit and has her beauty mark under her lip. I, I think that's the only thing about her design I really don't like, but it, it, it adds a touch of character. Uh, what Wii U Vita games I'm being asked? So far, just Nintendo Land and New Super Mario U for the Wii U. And for Vita, Persona 4 Golden and Ragnarok Odyssey. Another save point. So only a couple for each, but getting this job and having the mo having the money to spare, with with a chance of getting it back in a couple paychecks, really gave me a reason to be excited for Christmas this year. <laughs> and it's really nice because I, I paid for the I paid for the consoles. My parents are paying for the games. I just put those on my Christmas list. And here's my second type of pirates. They fly around and are generally annoying.
Yeah, no choice but to grab Ragnarok Odyssey since everyone's getting it. That's good. I think. Does, how much online capability does it have? Oh. It's not going to be good if I die even before I get to the boss. I, th I think Ragnarok Odyssey is going to be fun, both solo and multiplayer. Oh, man. So here's the first boss, the Spore Spawn. Shoot him, and hopefully get some energy back. It's also good for restocking your missiles. Uh, you're pretty much just stuck, waiting for it to open its mouth. I don't remember how many missiles it takes, I think 10 or so. As long as you stay low to the ground and avoid the spores, he's not that bad. I just hate fighting because of, of the music. I think sometimes if you're lucky you can get two, two missiles off on him. Okay, so four player co-op online and locally for Ragnarok Odyssey. That, that'll be fun. I'm also getting Ragnarok Tactics for PSP, as, as well as Gungnir. I think I got them once. Th those are ones I'd been hesitant on getting, but since I'm not paying for them, <laughs> I can give them a shot. <laughs> this guy's gonna get a lot faster as he gets lower on health. Oh yeah, I got him twice that time. So yeah, you can hit you can hit him more than once with your missiles. I read, I read a good article yesterday, the day before, talking about how the Vita is a great system, but Sony has completely screwed it up. Oh, totally missed. <laughs> simply, simply because it's gotten uh, poor rehashes of popular games. It really doesn't have anything exclusive. I've had people have different, different opinions on that. Ah, it's too high. I'll get him next time. Now, this guy also reminds me of those stupid Venus flytraps that instantly killed you on Bionic Commando. Yet another childhood nightmare enemy. <laughs> oh, I got three off. Sweet. That was worth the hit. <laughs> I can't help but think you know, this guy's moving to the beat in some fashion. I'll get the missiles ready. He's going to open up. Ah. I was cornered. <laughs> Couldn't turn around in time. Got plenty of health left, at least. And he's toast. So we destroyed him, destroyed the whole lair, destroyed the entire ecosystem of this room. And according to the radar, there's something in here. And I don't know what, if anything. Because what we want as our reward from beating this guy is up in here. I'll come back in here later with the x-ray scope. <laughs> So shoot these guys if you need a uh, refill, which I don't. Jump on here. Yeah, I think in later games it's possible to go into your spinning flip even while you're falling. Not so on this one. So this is the first Metro game to introduce super missiles. I think they're twice, maybe three times as powerful as regular missiles. But you only get about a third as many. So I'll come back in here, and return to where we were, without taking too much damage. This is a super missile door, just shoot one at it. I always love that, how those enemies just drop in from the ceiling too, because of the shaking. That, that was a nice little touch. And another block that can only be destroyed by super missiles. So from here, we want to go down. But I think I can get that item that's on the left. Or maybe not, because that's a... Need the grapple beam. Yeah, one thing about this is you definitely have to do a lot of backtracking if you want everything. That's a power bomb door, if I didn't already mention. If you come over here, a free missile upgrade. <laughs> That's always handy to have. And of course, bombs are always your best friend for unveiling blocks until you get the X-ray scope later on. But, we get the charge beam. If I remember correctly, the 
especially once you get more beams to add onto it. It ends up becoming more powerful than super missiles. Uh, for now, oh, it's, it's just this little spark. And anything in here? Need a power bomb. So I'm going to continue on until I get to the next save point and stop it there, rather than backtrack to the last one. That shouldn't be too far off. Now there is another missile expansion up in here. It's hard to get without the high jump boots. You actually have to roll up into your morph ball and go inside this tube up here. You can bomb jump up, it, up to it right now, but that'd just be a waste of time. So, I'll follow the path. Nothing over here. This is a one-way gate, at least until you have the wave beam. Just shoot that, it'll open up. Shoot it again, it'll close. But when, once you leave the room, it'll close automatically. So we're stuck in here for a good while. These enemies will shoot needles at you if you get too close. Okay, this is the room that will always foil noobs who don't know about the dash. You just want to dash across here. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, it's very painful, very hectic. I, I read about that so much online. People who just don't know how to dash in this game. And it might be possible to come up here just by wall jumping, but that's not the way to go anyway. <laughs> this is kind of a connection point between Brinstar and Meridia in one sense. It's got the Meridia music. Okay, you can just shoot those normally. Needed a power bomb to get through that door. Not a pro not an issue at this point. Energy refill station. Already at full health. Don't need it. Yeah, Sony is still mar horrible at marketing decisions in the chat. And I think, I think the biggest example of that is just the fact that the PlayStation Vita memory cards have to be Sony, and they're expensive. A 32 gigabyte one is 100 bucks, 80 on Amazon. Now you can come up here as soon as you get the high jump boots, but if you know the wall jump, you're already in. <laughs> and hold right, because otherwise that'll fall. Another super missile, holy cow. But, another goodie! The Spazer, as I call it from Metroid 2, the Spazer Laser. It's a nice upgrade to your er, to your cannon. So doing that, it I don't know if it quite hits enemies on the ground. We'll, we'll see that once we get to once we get to uh, one this at ground level. <laughs> oh, gotta burp, gotta burp, gotta burp. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Can hold that back. I had Mexican for lunch. And if you pick up a super missile and refill, it only gives you one. <laughs> Those guys will just drag you into the water and munch on you, and you get hurt by the spikes. I take great pride in being the first one in my family to know what to do in that room when we first played the game. <laughs> Even though it's completely by accident, you just blow you just blow it with a power bomb. Now this is the way you need to go, but you can come down here and go into Norfair and pick up the high jump boots, which is what I'm going to do. And since since I still haven't gotten to a save point, I'm going to go ahead and fight Kraid. I'll end the video after beating Kraid. So there are some rooms you want to go into, some you don't right here. Dash through here, can't make it. So this is not the room to go into. Got to find the way out though. There we go. You need the speed booster to get through that one. I think this is a heated room. Yep, get out of here. <laughs> Run, Sabbath. Even outside of her suit, they're still too hot for her. Oh man, just gotta think how much she might, she possibly sweats when in her suit. Then again, it's probably temperature regulated, so don't want to don't want to overthink these things. It's Nintendo logic, after all. Okay, another energy tank, also useful to have for the boss fight. Of course, the most useful thing is the high jump boost. That makes them a lot easier. 
There we go. Another missile expansion. Ah. I think I can, I think I can. Yep. Excellent. But then again, I didn't need to do this. <laughs> You'll see why in a moment. Oh, and another thing. I'm actually using a different microphone now. It's the same brand, but not quite the same model. I, I was actually looking for it before I bought the other one. I finally found it. It was in a box. It was in my room the whole time. I just never looked at it. Get in there, Samus. Thank you. That's why I can jump into it normally. Had to crouch. So the high jump boots. What I came in here for. It'll let us get back in here at an angle. And that's also the way to get out of here. <laughs> so, I got that missile prematurely. Hi, Mosaic, how you doing? Yep, this is a, this is just a graphical mod of Super Metroid. It's called the Justin Bailey version, and it just removes Samus's suit. So you get to see her, her in her leotard, based on the original game's design. And did I kill that thing? It disappeared. Yep, I got it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure this leads into another heated room. Nope, save point. Excellent. But, if I go that way, I'll burn alive. Really don't want that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I need some super missiles. Otherwise, I can't progress in the, back in Brinstar. Nothing. Okay, well, I might be able to find something up here. Those needle enemies usually drop super missiles. I'm being asked in the chat if I play a lot of Metroid and other old Super NES games. Yes, I do! The theme for my channel is classic games revisited and reimagined. And so the main focus is games that are modded, redone, retranslated, whatever. And of course this is just one of those examples where I'm doing it slightly redone. Oh, thanks for the follow. Sorry, my, my dad was at the door. I need to move my car once I'm done here, but... I'll be done 10 minutes for today. Yeah, Mosaic, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have the same username there. All of my videos are there. Because they don't. Twitch doesn't always keep Let's Play videos. This is LP number 9 for me. Okay, now we can get through here. And I think you can get up there without the high jump boots. It's just a lot easier to use them. Okay, that door will not open until you beat Kraid. Just come this way. Well, I, I, I wouldn't really know if those enemies are tentacles. They actually have mouths. And ha having the spacer makes these guys a lot easier, too. You can take them out before they even get close. That's for what's down in here, I don't remember. I think this is the way to go, actually. Oh, it is. There's the fake crate. Oh, that's right, those little teeth can hurt you. That wasn't bad. That's how you restock your missile supply in here. Anything up here? Oh, super missile door's gonna mean something. Oh good. Energy and missile station, excellent. The designers decided to be merciful for, th merciful for the first boss. I never found Kraid all that scary. I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that it was always the Metroids that scared me as a kid. Now here's a poor space marine who obviously got this far, but didn't make it. I have a missile in the eye door. 
Now there is a way to beat this guy in about 10 seconds. I never, I never really learned it. It's not that hard, especially with the high jump boots. You might just hit Kraid when his mouth opens. Don't let the size intimidate you. Like so. <laughs> yeah, one super missile is enough to take him into a second form, where you normally would have to jump on one of his stomach spikes. Ah, he blocked it. Now you can either use missiles or charge beam from here on out. Ah. Ooh. That was a lucky landing, but <laughs> I messed up. Open up, open up. Ouch. Though the, the Super Metroid it comics in Nintendo Power did a really good job making Kraid look intimidating. Crap! Get back up! Get that big health, too. Go me for using all my missiles. <laughs> Will you open up? Move! Do something! <laughs> there we go, he's toast. So, not that bad. If you have more super missiles, it's even easier. <laughs> Coming here for the Varia suits, or simply called Varia. And Samus sh should change colors. Yep. She went from pink to red. Now, Lovings, I know I should stream more often. I I've actually been pretty busy, of course. I mentioned I got a new job. I've been getting ready for that. And I've been watching a lot of anime this past week. I started, it actually started and completed the second, third, and fourth seasons of F Familiar of Zero. Really, really enjoyed that series. And yesterday I started watching Birdie the Mighty. I w and she, she's kind of like Samus, but with some similarities, especially in outfit. <laughs> but th that was another reason why I, I brought this game on. Uh, I, I watched the original four OVAs, and that, once I'm done here, I'm going to start the, start the TV series. And there's a stupid pop-up on Twitch right now that's making it impossible for me to see the very bottom of the chat. <laughs> so if I, if I respond a bit late, it's because I can't see it. I don't, I don't want to pause Zeus Nest to, to scroll it up. But I'm going to go into the save point and call it good for today. It's been about 45 minutes. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Gunnar, I'm Dine, call me Dine. I'll probably continue on this tomorrow. This has been Super Metroid, Justin Bailey version. You guys take care.